Well, it's referendum night and the results have come in very fast and have killed off those who had hoped for a voice to parliament to be enshrined in the constitution. We saw within 30 minutes of the votes coming in from Tasmania and New South Wales that uh, no was likely to be successful in those two states and then South Australia came in and it was clear that the double majority required, which is getting a majority of all voters and then a majority of the states was not not going to be achieved and that has killed off this referendum. Of the 44 referendums that this country has had, only eight have been successful and the last one of those was back in 1977. The uh, breakdown of the votes are very interesting because you can see a very big difference between the inner cities of from even from Hobart through Melbourne and Sydney to the outer suburbs and especially across regional and remote Australia. That the people of, of the outer suburbs, the provincial centres and rural areas have said no way to the voice as proposed to them in this referendum. Be that as it may, there are some sites where there is huge support. Uh, the booth of, of Carlton South in Melbourne, which is held by Greens leader Adam Bant, 93% of voters said yes. And we're starting to see some of the polling from uh, booths in isolated areas with very large indigenous populations and in these areas where we're talking 50 to 60 to even 80 percent of the population is indigenous they are overwhelmingly voting yes very high votes of around 60 to 70 to 80 percent so that's telling you which was one of the big issues whether indigenous Australians really wanted the voice at the booth level you can see that they certainly did but people in areas uh, such as regional New South Wales, the seat of uh, Farrah, which is held by the Deputy Liberal Leader, Susan Lee, voted 73-27 against. So a real big gap between inner city Australia and outer city Australia.